Everyone will tell you, ANSI's animation film festival is like a big family reunion. The animation family. And nothing's better than a family reunion with a long time no see brother showing up with a new baby. <laughs> <laughs> we are so excited today to welcome producers Jonas Rivera yes. and Mark Nielsen and director Josh Cooley for the French premiere of Toy Story 4. Yes. Hello guys and thank, thank you, you for being here. Thank Thanks for having Happy us. Happy to be here. It's been nine years since we last saw you in NC. Yeah. <laughs> Haven't you missed us? <laughs> We've missed you so much. We love it here. This is actually our, our, our first, first time at NC. Pixar yes. long history. It's a very proud history of coming. But we are, this is our first time as individuals. So we are so happy to be here. Thrilled. And this is a bit rainy today, but uh, yeah. I guess that you will bring up some sun tonight. We hope so. In we the theaters. So. Yes. And so. please enjoy and see. And how long are you staying? Till t through tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah. Till tomorrow. We get to see a little bit. Of the, of Short the stay, but yeah. we'll do longer next time. Yeah, next yeah. time. Jonas, yes, uh, you were a production office assistant on the first yes. Toy Story in 1995 and as a marketing creative resource yeah, on yeah. Toy Story 2. That's Mark, right, you, know that. yeah. yes. you were working as modeling and shading coordinator on Toy Story 2. Yes. And Josh, you know Mark and uh, yeah. Jonas as brothers since a long time. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. that's right. Up, Inside Out, Riley's First Date. Cars. Cars. Yeah. Cars. Yeah. Cars. Yeah. cars? What's mm -hmm. Cars? Yeah, we no, started the way. <laughs> <laughs> so this is also a family story here, isn't it? It is. Yeah. I mean, I think yeah, that's is. fair to say at Pixar, you know, so many of us have gone back many years that it feels almost more like a family there than, than a studio. We've all worked on a number of films together, uh, invested our lives, you know, into, into the studio, so uh, it, does, it does feel like that. Yeah, I was Josh's first manager in the story department on the first car. Mark called me when I was living at home with my parents and offered me the internship. That was in 1934. How old were you? <laughs> uh, how old was I? Oh, boy. 22, maybe? Yeah. 23, 22? Yeah. Glad you said yes. Yeah, we're doing yeah. it too. Were you just asking we're to see glad why too. we were living at, yeah. with your parents? That's, <laughs> you know what that was? That's the real question. Yeah, I get it. This Toy Family Story started in uh, 1988, actually, with a Tin Toy, Tin toy right. mm -hmm. a John Lasseter short right. film, uh, in which we see a lot of things that, are, that have been developed in all the stories uh, since, but things have changed a little. Can you tell us about this whole... Yeah, you're right. Tin Toy is sort of the, the, the grandparent of Toy Story in a way, mm -hmm. right? A little Tinny and, and, uh, and, and the baby chasing him around. In fact, Tinny's, we brought Tinny back. Is mm -hmm. his little cameo, cameo in Toy Story 4 because that, that is the roots of, of Toy Story. I mean, I think Toy Story, you know, that evolved into the first film in 1995, which is, you know, based on this idea that uh, I think we all know is true that toys are alive when, when we're not there, you know, when we're not looking. We all thought yeah, that as kids. It's a true kids. story. Mm -hmm. It's a true it's a story. We made a documentary. It's, it's fact. <laughs> Toy Story is proof. And uh, it, you, that idea has kind of resonated around the world. and through a number of these pictures, and yeah, we've, we've pushed it forward into a little bit of a new direction with this one. Mm -hmm. This new chapter of the saga is bringing up a lot of new things. The cinematic introduction scene, for example, is quite different, differently inspired than the three first one. How do you decide what must change and what mustn't? Well, the one thing we, we didn't want to change is just the aesthetic of, of Toy Story. So, when you watch this film, we wanted to make sure it felt different and new, but also the same, which is very difficult to do. So the, the aesthetic of, pic, of uh, Toy Story is exaggerated shapes, and, but realistic textures and theatrical lighting. And so we, every, every shot, every scene, we made sure that we stayed consistent with that. There are a character who is coming back yes. in Toy yes. Story 4. Can yes. you tell us a little about her? So yeah, so Bo Peep has always been the core of the idea of Toy Story 4 from when it first was sort of brought up as an idea from Andrew Stanton, one of our writers and our executive producer. We're thrilled about Bo. You mentioned the opening scene. Mm -hmm. It's kind of different in Toy Story 4 because it was important for us to set up and remind everyone of the connection that Woody and Bo had. So we need to remind you of, of where, where she's been and what happened to her because kind of we get to see her later in the film and she's sort of reimagined and, and it was a chance to bring a character back that we haven't seen. Woody hasn't seen her in nine years. 
Um, the audience hasn't seen her since really Toy Story 2, but we know those two characters had a deep connection. So this, this, we get to bring them back face to face in this film. And that's going to be what we're looking for in this movie too. Yes. Absolutely. Easter eggs are a, picture, a Pixar family tradition. Yes. Yeah. You stick to the tradition <laughs> this time too. I think we, yeah. we, we did more than stick to the tradition this time. This is the, the mother load of Easter eggs in, in this film. I mean, there's, we have this set, which you'll see is an antique store, sort of collection, secondhand store, and it's filled with objects, frames, pictures, um, little, little things, props, and, my, but props, and we, we took something from every film, even the short films, and hid them inside for everyone to, to look for. It's pretty fun. Some of them are very obvious, more obvious than others. Other ones, there's some I haven't even seen yet. That's right. They're really deep <laughs> in there. So this is a movie you can watch over and over and over, yeah, like you did so. for yeah. the first one. And yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. There is an Easter egg I would like you to explain a little. Okay. It's <laughs> a license plate. It's oh. a RMR F97. There is very a, specific. That's the one yeah, the yeah, yeah. beginning. There yeah. is a terrifying story yeah, behind this. Yeah, yeah. so I, I had the, yeah. pr the pleasure of working on Toy Story 2, and there was, a, there was a kind of a terrifying moment on that film when they realized that one of our shading and paint artists had accidentally deleted the entire movie from the render farm. Just gone. <laughs> Um, so there was we won't a, name names. But we yeah. were not going to name no, names. No, no. But we never saw that person ever again. <laughs> <laughs> but so there was a scramble. But the, the supervising technical director at that time had a backup of the film at her house on her computer at home. Is that enough? Was she on maternity leave? Yeah, she was on maternity yeah. leave. And so they literally had to go out and, and get the movie from her house, bring it back and, and kind of revive it back at the studio. But that number that you said, that is the key command that this person accidentally typed on their keyboard that deleted the film. <laughs> That's crazy. So. It, there could have been no Toy Story 2. Yeah, that's true. Yes. Yes. That would be the end of the story. That since could have been it. 20 years. We would. I don't know if we'd even still be working at the company. So, take, so we hope everyone looks at that license plate, goes home, and types that into their computer. See, <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that, kids. Yeah. Don't do it. <laughs> okay, let's get technical a little. All right. How do you manage the evolution of technology to tell a story that started almost 25 years ago with a much different computer power? Mm, yeah. Well, you know, when we start thinking about the stories that uh, the story we want to tell, the technology isn't a part of that. It's not what we don't talk about that in the story room. It's more about just the the human emotion that we're trying to get across and to, and how we want the audience to feel from scene to scene. And uh, once we have that locked down, that's actually the thing that I bring to the technical side that I, I'm just trying to convey to them. I said, this is the emotion we're going for. Um, I don't understand how they do any of that magical, uh, beautiful imagery, but all I do is try and convey, here's the, here's the feeling we want, and then they they are so artistic and so, talent that, so talented that they bring that forward. And our new computer can do, can do anything. So yeah. um, it's amazing to see what they're able to do. Yes, it is. Yeah, I mean, the first Toy Story was the, the first ever feature computer animated movie, and they were pushing the limits of everything they could do with computers at that time. But I think what's not different is we were kind of doing the same thing even now. Mm -hmm. We tried to mm -hmm. max, yeah. we, we tried to do as much with the computing power that we had as possible, and um, there's just a stunning amount of detail that we were able to get in this film that just was not possible back in 95. Yeah, and yet we're trying to remain true to the visual grammar of Toy Story so mm -hmm. that the audience is, you know, it doesn't look like it's a different movie. It has to be in the same world. Mm -hmm. So the color space and the, the environment and the textures, you know, it's all echoes of what was there, but shown, I think, with more fidelity and, and clarity than, than we ever could have dreamed in 1995. Yeah. Is there a line not to cross here? To Absolutely. keep yeah. the, the human like this yeah. and the toys like this, but yeah. not go too close to realistic views. Yeah, and we crossed it a few. I mean, we there had to couple, pull back sometimes. Yeah. Okay. Where, For know. example, the rainstorm at the very beginning, we uh, had shots early on that looked, you could not tell the difference. Too realistic. Too real. too real. And uh, we just, I think we ex expanded the, uh, um, scaled up the, the raindrops like 300% just to make it feel more exaggerated and more kind of violent for the, for the toys to try to get it through. Yeah, we've got human characters like Mom and Dad and Bonnie in this one, and yet you've got these very, and they're caricatured, right? They're designing looking mm -hmm. characters. They don't look human, but there's so much realism in the, in the environment that we had to find that balance to make sure that they felt like the characters still belonged and integrated into that, into that world. 
One of the new things in Toy Story 4 is a toy who's not actually a toy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you explain us that choice? <laughs> The choice. Um, <laughs> the choice is the way to say it. The, the, we, it, you know, it started with a, just kind of a joke. We were sitting around in the story room and saying, uh, well, what would happen? You know, we're, we're looking at our own kids and how our kids play with, with mm -hmm. they'll pick up a, a rock and go do 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 do, and now that's a toy. Mm -hmm. But we we're thinking in the Toy Story world, would that mean that that's a character? Does that come to life now? And so that, that idea was just a funny idea. And, just, and uh, we thought, well, what if we actually made it like an arts and crafts? character out of a spork and uh, Bonnie likes it and writes her name on it and it comes to life and just having you know this, this is something that was I think works really well with the fourth film is having Toy Story 1, 2 and 3 we've all seen those movies we all know the rules of the world but this new character does not and so uh, it just became a great way to, to force Woody to explain what it means to, to be a toy. It uh, makes us think about that baby in, in Tin Toy who's playing with the box at the end instead <laughs> yeah, of the toy. The box mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. that box. We should bring that back. Box story. <laughs> um, can you tell us a little blind casting voice uh, story? Or I how we cast? Yeah. About uh, Duke Kaboom. Oh, Duke Kaboom, yeah. There yeah. Is yeah. You, yeah, Duke was. Um, it's a new idea that, that we had, kind of based on something you'd said, where this film was an opportunity for us to kind of look at the toys we grew up with. You know, like for, we're kids of the 70s and 80s, and, mm -hmm. and uh, we had a lot of toys like that that were sort of mm -hmm. like stunt motorcycles. Wind them up and get me go. It just made us laugh that it'd be this stunt man, but Canadian stunt yeah, man. Yeah, and, and our, casting, <laughs> our casting director that we meet with, we, we do these blind um, kind of auditions where they, we said we wanted to be a Canadian actor. And they brought maybe 25 actors to the table, but and we listen to the voices without knowing who the actors are. We're just looking at an image of the character and listening to the voices, and they step through. And there are clips of voices that were pulled from interviews yeah. or TV yeah, shows. Random movies. A lot, of, a lot of things we've never seen before. But when we got and heard Keanu's voice, I think the three of us at the same time we up, were like, yeah. that, that's, there's, there's something, so go that's back to that. Yeah. Who, is, who is that? Let's go back to that. And we didn't even identify exactly who it was at first. But when we learned it was Keanu, we're like, we have to try. Mm -hmm. He's, we lo we're big fans. We are. We, we love him. And he came to Pixar and we talked to him. He, in fact, he wanted to do that. And Before he even said yes to the role, he said, I'd love to meet with you guys and just hang out and talk more about it. And uh, he came up and had lunch with us and we were just talking about the character. And originally, originally it was just kind of a, a side joke kind of character, but he was asking these great questions like, what is, he, what is Duke afraid of? And, and what is he? Uh, what drives him? And these mm. kind of really interesting getting questions. Getting into the, the getting, character. Really getting yeah. into it. Mm -hmm. and, he dove um, deep. He dove so deep that he started to to become the character kind of right there in front of us. And he was doing poses, like knowing that it was a, a kind of a toy that you can pose. He started going, huh, 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 huh. <laughs> and and right there in the lunchroom to the point where he stood up on the table and was going, I'm Duke Kaboom, and we were just like, well, that's. That's Duke Kaboom right there. I have so many questions to ask you, but I can hear the crowd. Uh, Avance's yeah. audience who's waiting mm. for you, so I'm gonna... Are they angry with us? They no, <laughs> I no, think no, they're quite happy to coolie, see you again. Coolie, coolie, coolie. <laughs> uh, we sincerely hope that we will see you again in Nancy, maybe for a Toy Story 5 or a new creation. Or maybe a new maybe creation. Maybe a new creation. We'll okay. just, we're gonna find is any there, excuse we can to get here Is there again. a secret you can share here? A secret, maybe. Now, you know, I think we could say that there's a slate of films being developed at Pixar now uh, that is unlike anything we, we've ever seen. It's, mm -hmm. it's kind of a new era. There's six or seven original films, new directors, new producers. Uh, there's a lot. I don't know if I've ever been more excited about kind That's of what's coming. Cool. So yeah. we will be back. We will we, be back. We expect this. Thank My you. last question that we ask to all our guests here is to look at the camera here okay. and thank directly, personally, an animation character that has changed your life. Oh, thank oh, the character. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That, Ooh. Um, this has been a long time coming. But. <laughs> and I don't want to urge you, but you are much awaited, guys. You know, I, was, I, I would like to thank the animation character that changed my life. And don't, don't laugh. No. But it's Ariel. <laughs> don't laugh. <laughs> I'm not laughing. Get out of here. Too late. <laughs> because the Little Mermaid. Don't listen to these guys. It was the movie I saw that made me change from loving animation to wanting to work in animation. That's the movie that did it. Would you say that she became part of your world? <laughs> <laughs>
she did. I would like to thank Roger Rabbit. Roger Rabbit is the movie that did the exact same thing yeah. for me, where I went from loving animation to wanting to work in animation. Thank you, Roger Rabbit. I hope this counts. It's based on a book, but James from James and the Giant Peach, the stop motion version. That yes. was my first film I ever got the chance to work on. It introduced me to animation. I, I fell in love with it and have been a part of it ever since. So thank you, James. And thank you guys for this great cool. moment in NC. Yeah, we are waiting you. for you next year. Thank oh, you. Thank have, you. A, have a very nice day. Very thank nice. you so much. Back. Great talking with you. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Thank